12 year old bourbons. For some, it's the sweet spot, the age at which bourbon is loved most. Today, I've chosen five 12 year old bourbons for a fun blind flight today on the Mash and Drum. One of the most common misconceptions newbies to the bourbon world hold is thinking that the older the whiskey, the better. Simply put, older is not the same as better. American whiskey isn't scotch. Bourbon is aged in more variable climates and new charred oak barrels. In contrast to scotch, where distillers are aging their product in cooler climates and pre-used barrels. A scotch can sit for 20 years, 30 years, even longer in the barrel before the flavors begin to get bitter or oaky. For bourbons, many distillers will say that six to eight years in the barrel is optimum for bourbon. Some will say 12 years is the max, and even that depends on where the barrels are aging and what profile the distiller is trying to achieve. Either way, seeing that big 12 number on a bourbon bottle is a hard number to pass up. With a lot of age statements disappearing and now reappearing in some cases, today I thought it'd be fun to put together a blind flight of five 12 year old bourbons to see which 12 year takes the top spot. Let's dive in and see what the contenders are. If there was one bottle of bourbon that has defined both the excitement and frustration of the ongoing bourbon boom, it's definitely Weller 12 year. Once a quality bourbon, always available on the shelf for about 30 bucks, then fast forward to being labeled as Baby Pappy Van Winkle, and then the bourbon boom, now to one of the most sought after and hard to find bourbons on the market. Weller 12 is a weeded bourbon from Buffalo Trace, bottled at 90 proof, heavily allocated, and is normally priced today at $150 and higher. The 2018 release of Old Forester Birthday Bourbon from Brown Foreman was the 18th release of the series. At the time, its 101 proof point was the highest to date until last year's, which was a little bit higher. Uh, the 2018 edition is comprised of 120 barrels. The 2018 had an unusually low yield of just 39%, and five barrels were actually found to be empty, resulting in only 14,400 bottles being released. Old Forester Birthday Bourbon has always been one of the most sought after, bourbon releases every fall, and this one happens to be my personal favorite. This is 12 years old and bottled at 101 proof. Seventeen ninety two small batches Barton's flagship bourbon. The brand once featured an eight year age statement found on the back of the bottle, but was removed in late 2013, followed by a bottle design change soon after. After this change, a substantial line extension took place that included 1792 Sweet Wheat, the Port Finish, the Single Barrel, the Full Proof, and the High Rye. In July 2019, 1792's age statement returned, but now sporting that ripe old age of 12 years old on the bottle with an MSRP of only 50 bucks. One batch of 1792 aged 12 years will be released each summer with a proof of 96.6. When the bourbon shortage hit Kentucky in 2015, one of the casualties was the nine-year age statement for Knob Creek. Four years later and plenty of increased production, Beam has not only given the age statement back to the standard small batch, but it has also added another late last year. Enter the Knob Creek bourbon 12 years old. This is bottled at 100 proof, and this is a welcome addition to the Knob Creek lineup with an MSRP of about 70 bucks. Lastly is Calumet Farm's Single Rack Black 12-Year-Old Bourbon Whiskey. Crafted from an extremely small batch of 19 barrels that have all been aged in a single center cut rack from the ideal maturation location and conditions inside the rickhouse. Calumet Bourbon, as folklore goes, pays homage to William Monroe Wright, once owner of the Calumet Baking Powder Company, whose Kentucky farm was famous for its award-winning horses. Frustratingly, this is sourced from an unknown location, but it's bottled at 94 proof, has a high rye mash bill supposedly, and it's priced around 70 bucks. All right, so as you can see, we have some pretty unique selections within this flight, all 12 years old, uh, including the Knob Creek 12 year, which was which I got late last year. Also the brand new 1792 aged 12 years uh, batch, which uh, was one of those I was looking for for a while. Thank you again, Douglas Papa, if you're watching, uh, for helping me get that bottle, I really appreciate it. Uh, so I, I thought including those in this uh, flight would actually be pretty cool because I haven't really put them up against anything. So putting them in a flight with uh, against these other three uh, should be pretty interesting. Plus, I, I it's been a long time since I tried the Calumet 12, 
which was kind of a weird bourbon the last time I tried it. So I figured I'd throw it in here at 12 years old as well. So let's mix them up. All right, guys, so I have them all mixed up. Uh, let's start with letter A. I've, I've marked them down so I don't lose track of where I placed them and where I uh, ranked them. Uh, that happens to me sometimes because there's so much going on. So let's try letter A first. Here we go. So the nose on this one definitely comes off very caramel and nut forward, almost like a um, little bit of a Cracker Jack. Very peanutty. Maybe a slight hint of chocolate there. You definitely get some oak tannins in there on the, on the nose. Cinnamon spice. I mean, this is already making me think it could be the Knob Creek with that bean flavor profile. Yeah, this is a lot of peanut, a lot of oak, hint of chocolate, cinnamon spice. This is a really good nose, I think, for a 12-year-old bourbon. It's kind of what you're looking for. It's got a good balance of sweet and oak. So let's go for a sip. Cheers. Mmm. Very consistent with the palate. Yeah, very peanutty. Mmm. Very spicy, too. It's got a nice finish for a lot of uh, black pepper there. Definitely get that oak. Let's go for another sip here. The finish is slightly, slightly bitter. Not too bad though. But again, getting a really good mix of the, uh, the caramel, a little bit of honey there too. Definitely a, a nuttiness factor going on, which is making it really interesting. Really nice finish, very peppery, like I said. I would think that that's definitely kind of a higher rye. I don't think, none of these are, are really high proof. The highest proof bourbon in here is actually the Old Forester, which is 101. So knowing that, I would think, if, if you kind of do the math, if you're thinking these are gonna come in hot based on the proof, no, I think it's gonna come in hot based on the mash bill. So I would think that's a higher rye mash bill. Let's go for one last sip. Yeah, the third sip even got a little bit more funky. It starts off really good. Once your palate gets used to it, some of these, kind of bitter oak tannin start kind of taking over, especially mid palate. You still get the sweetness up front. Mid palate gets a little bit bitter. And then, but the finish is still giving you a nice high rye finish. So um, not so bad for the first one. So let me take that some notes there. Okay, let's try letter B here. Okay, now B's nose is on another level. That is delicious smell in the nose. Rich, almost smells creamy. God, this is just vanilla icing and almost I'm getting like, it's like a spiced cake where there's all these baking spices in there. You get the, the nutmeg and the cinnamon, but it's completely covered with uh, like sweet vanilla frosting. Wow. There's definitely some oak back there too. Again, being 12 years old, you're gonna get some good oak influence. Man, a little hint of cherry. Man, chocolate. Yeah, the nose on this is just, I could smell this bourbon for a long time. It's just a really good nose. Let's go for a taste of this one. Wow, this one has so much more going on uh, than letter A. God, the sweetness factor that's in here, all those baking spices that I was getting on the nose just really attack your palate. Up front though, it's, it's almost like a, um, yeah, again, it's like vanilla and chocolate together that come forward. And then as it hits mid palate, then you get all the baking spices, the vanilla frosting, everything I was getting on the nose. I need another sip of that one. This is like some caramel drizzle on top of that spice cake. Oh my goodness. Just peppery, spicy, but not, not a different type of spicy than this. This is more of a baking spice spicy where you're getting the cinnamon, the nutmeg, those like those really nice fall baking spices. A little bit of the cherry, the vanilla, the vanilla frosting, some caramel drizzle. This is just really candy in the glass. It's so good. I have to have one more sip of this. Yeah, and it stays consistent too. It's just consistently giving you all those flavors every single sip, getting the same experience, all that sweetness up front, the vanilla, the chocolate, getting some, some dried fruits too in the mid palate, all those baking spices on the finish. The finish is definitely not lingering like, like A, but it's still finishing with a good amount. You're getting that, that cinnamon and that little bit of a black pepper that just lingers there. It's not overly stingy at all. Just really great bourbon, whichever one that is. That's really good. I have a guess as to what that one is, but I'm not gonna say it just yet. All right, let's go for letter C here. Wow, letter C, again, very different on the nose in A and B. 
This is very, very sweet. There's a little bit of a, of a mustiness that's coming through. It's not really bad in any way, but definitely different nose than A and B. Very, very uh, caramel forward. Good balance of oak and sweet. Definitely love that about a good 12 year. Yeah, sometimes once you get past an eight year old uh, bourbon, sometimes, you know, once you get to 10, 12 years, sometimes depending on where it's aged, as I mentioned, sometimes where it's aged, the, the climate it went through for the time of its aging, sometimes could just pull some really funky flavors out of the barrel. But this, yeah, this, yeah, this does have a, a little bit of a musty oak influence to it. But at the same time, there's a lot of sweet that balances that out. Just, it's a really good nose. All right, here we go. Let's go for a sip. This one's a lot softer on the palate than A and B. This is just drinking really easy, but very flavorful at the same time. It kind of hits the, the front of the palate right away with a ton of vanilla, caramel. There's some baking spice in there too. Maybe a hint of, uh, maybe a little bit of a milk chocolate there. I'm getting a little bit, very slightly, but it's more like a chocolate covered almond type thing. There's a, there's kind of a nuttiness that's going along with it too. Let's go for another sip. Well, that second sip was even better. So a little bit of those, uh, those, those prickly oak tannins are starting to dance around on the palate a little bit. It's really balancing out the sweet very nicely. Not nearly as, um, I don't think it's as mouth coating as B or even A. I think it's definitely lighter, but at the same time, it's also providing a very good, uh, very good uh, uh, flavor punch on the palate. Getting a lot of flavor up front on the, on the finish. Let's go for one last sip here. Yeah, again, that's, it's just very sweet, very candy. The musty notes I was picking up on the nose, I'm not really getting on the palate. This is just all good balance, good sweetness, good oak. That's just a really good solid bourbon. Not really sure which one that is. Um, I have an idea, which I th think it might be, but we'll uh, we'll see afterwards. So let me take some notes real quick. All right, let's go to D here. Wow, D is a vanilla bomb. Wow. This is just pure vanilla in a glass. I mean, vanilla extract, like hands down. It's the first thing that just jumps out of the glass. Just a ton of vanilla. There is some caramel there, but the vanilla, like the vanilla frosting or vanilla extract note is just so powerful. Definitely get some oak there. Slight hint of nuttiness. This is coming off as more sweet than oaky. So even though it's, uh, we know it's 12 years old, this is not leaning more towards oak. It's leaning more towards sweet, which is really nice. It's what, which is what you really want with something that gets up there in age. You hope that it stays sweeter rather than gets a little bit, you know, too bitter and oaky. But some people like the bitterness and the oakiness. It just depends what you like. Man, again, this is, it's just vanilla extract and, and fruit and some baking spices in there. I mean, just great nose on D. All right, here we go. On the palate, that comes off as way more nuttiness on the palate than I was getting on the nose. But that vanilla is holding true. That vanilla extract note, mm, really good on the front of the palate. That cherry comes through in the mid palate. Good finish on that one too. That one's nice. Let's go for another sip of that one. I dare to say that I love the D. <laughs> There's way more oak on the palate than you're getting on the um, on the nose. The nose is just pure vanilla extract, vanilla frosting, some cherry, a little bit of oak there. Where the oak comes in is on the palate. That's where you feel it. The front of the palate is just all just vanilla, like I said, caramel, baking spices, mid palate. That nuttiness comes through, and then the finish is just oak tannin good finish there definitely getting a little bit of a rye kick could be some of the spice too on the back end one last sip of the d that's up there with uh with b is having really good balance c had really good balance too but it wasn't as um i know when it comes to flavor uh b and d even a was a little bit more punchy than c was but very good um, yeah, that one's going to get a pretty good high score. Let me take some notes for that one. All right, guys, we're down to the last one. Let's go to E, see what we get here. Wow, this one is all citrus and oak on the, on the nose. Ton of citrus, ton of oak. This is like orange creamsicle type aspect to it. Man, a little bit of a chocolate note to it. Almost like, um, like a chocolate covered, uh, oranges. 
This might be the oakiest out of all of them that I'm getting. There's a lot of oak that's jumping out of the glass on here. But good vanilla. Get a lot of that, the typical vanilla notes here. There is some more vanilla and caramel coming out of the glass. I do like that chocolate orange uh, thing that it's got going on though too. And it's also got some good spice jumping out of the glass. And whether that comes through with cinnamon, a little bit of black pepper. That one's, that's got a really good, that really well balanced nose, but I think that's probably the oakiest out of all of them, I think. All right, let's go for another sip. Wow. Yeah. And I think that's the most oakiest on the palate. It's a lot of oak coming through on that one. Yeah, you can almost taste that barrel char. There is some sweetness there. The sweetness is obviously all up front. That's where your tongue picks up all the sweetness is the very front of your tongue picks up all the, the sweet notes. And as it works its way back, it's gonna pick up the more of the, uh, the bitter notes, the oak, the tannins. Definitely getting that on E. Let's go for another sip. I wish it had more sweet to balance out the oak when compared to the other ones. There's a, this, this, this one is just way more oaky on the flavor profile, which, you know, can be good. So it has a really nice finish though. There's a lingering finish here that's uh, that's keeping me interested and in going back in to keep trying this. I love a good finish. Yeah, as you keep sipping it though, the sweetness is there. It starts taking a back seat to the oak. Good oak spice. Man, it's crazy. All five of these offer something completely different, all different experiences out of the glass. Man, the E, the, the finish on that one is just hanging on and on and on and on, which I really love. So, but it's just, again, that one just has a little bit more. So when I was talking about balance, this one is tilting more on the oak side. The sweet is a little bit, a little bit low on the scale and the oak is kind of taking over on E. So let me write down the scores. All right, guys, so here are my rankings. So in first place, I have letter B. In second place, I have letter D. Um, third place, I gave it to letter E. Fourth place, I gave it to letter C and last place was letter A. Okay, it's time to find out what is in each glass. So letter A was fifth place. Let's take a look. And letter A is, okay, interesting. This is the Calumet 12 Single Rack Black. This started off really good, but it just, it got funky on the back end the more I sipped it. These bitter, funky notes were coming through. Uh, once I get through these, I'll, I'll tell you what I think, I thought this was, because there are some questions as to where this is sourced from. Um, let's go to fourth place, which was this one. Um, I had a feeling with that mustiness and the easy sipping, this is the Weller 12. Oh, and it is, it's the Weller 12. That is very surprising. So Weller 12 came in uh, fourth place in this lineup, uh, which is not surprising. I mean, it's definitely an easy sipper, but yeah, for whatever reason, that mustiness was really coming out, which is sometimes is what you get in a weeder, especially one that gets up in age. But again, as I said, amazing sweetness and amazing balance in this one, but compared to the others, it just wasn't doing enough. All right, let's go to third place, which was this one. Really curious which, this, which one this one was. Oh, wow, that's really interesting. Okay, so this one is the 1792 age 12 years. So that one gets third place, easily the oakiest of all five. This one had the biggest oak presence but it makes sense because Barton is known for that. That signature is that high rye mash bill they use. Um, that, that finish just was lingering on and on and on. And it could definitely tell um, that this had a high rye presence to it. If not for that finish, this might have fallen further down uh, with that oakier profile to it. Definitely has a lot of sweet there, but easily the oakiest out of all five of these. Uh, let's go to second place, which is, wow. The Knob Creek 12 year comes in second, which makes first place Old Forester birthday bourbon 12 year. So a couple surprises for me. I thought the 1792, I wasn't sure what to expect. I think finishing third was good. Weller 12 I thought would finish in the top two, but it just didn't compared to the other two. Old Forester birthday bourbon, again, this 12 year has been my favorite that I've had. And I even preferred this over last year's. I just love the balance of it and that, that sweetness that it has. If there's any question as to where Calumet might be sourced from, I would guess it's either Jim Beam or Heaven Hill. It's, I really thought that the Calumet was a Knob Creek 
before before it was all said and done with that nuttiness characteristic that you get from a beam. Uh, but once I had this, this was so far better in experience than the Calumet. Yeah, I'm really glad that they added this to the lineup. Just a fun blind tasting. All right, guys, well, I hope you enjoyed this episode on the Master and Drum as we did this fun 12-year-old bourbon blind tasting. Hope you enjoyed it. Let me know down in the comments if uh, you've had any of these, if you've had the Calumet 12, if you've had any of these, what your favorites are, um, if you thought my, my ranking was way off. I know there's a lot of Weller 12 fans out there that might think, that dude's crazy. There's no way that finishes um, in fourth place. But let me know down in the comments. If you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button below. Please hit that like button. If you haven't yet, find me on Instagram and find me on Twitter. Always love talking to you guys. And as I always say, it's not about the whiskey. It's the people you share it with. So cheers, and I'll see you next time on The Mash and Drum. Take care.